Uh, let me begin with the safe harbor statement. The presentation which we have uploaded on our website yesterday and all discussions during the call today may have some forward-looking statements. Uh, these statements are considering the environment we see as of today and obviously carry a risk in terms of uncertainty because of which the actual results could be different. And we do not undertake to update those statements periodically. So having said that, uh, You've seen our results on the uh, uploaded on the website and our, our social media account. And uh, uh, the results are encouraging. Uh, while uh, the trend of growth has continued, there is, uh, uh, is it, it's in line with the predictions that and the outlook that we gave in the, at the end of quarter two that we are targeting to reach the baseline levels of pre-COVID-1920. And in that line, the, uh, all our parameters are progressing in that direction. And we are quite confident that with this trend, the Q4 and this year is a complete year, we would be able to touch the pre-COVID levels of 1920. With these opening comments, I hand over to the uh, participants for their questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. We would also request participants to limit your question to one at a time. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Shreyan Mehta, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, sir, one request from my, you know, I mean, could you please have at least two questions per participant? You know, I mean, generally, you know, we have a follow-up question. So it's better, you know, we clarify it uh, at that point in time, you know, rather than waiting in the queue. So that's a suggestion from my side. Now coming to the question, uh, sir, if you see our export order book, you know, we are roughly at around 600, 650 crores, which is pending. And given that, you know, we'll be executing it in fourth quarter and next year probably for one queue. So uh, is it fair to assume that, you know, we'll be, uh, you know, uh, fulfilling this order and this entire order book will be over by, say, FY23? And if so, you know, I mean, how do you foresee the FI22, uh, sorry, FI23 revenue and EBITDA margins playing out? Uh, so very valid point regarding the exports. Uh, we have a balance order book of about 675 crores in exports. And uh, as you've seen, uh, we've touched a total cumulative of 700 crores in nine months. Uh, we foresee that in the quarter four, we should be realizing another about 250 to 75-odd crores, which leaves us with a balance of about 400 crores for FY22-23. Now, with the trend uh, of uh, the, the shipments uh, going on, I foresee that this should last till somewhere about middle of 2022-23. Uh, having said that, uh, uh, the, the exports, as you know, are a long lead uh, a line of business and we are aggressively now with the various uh, international countries uh, all over opening up we are in touch with a number of countries and trying to uh, fructify into a finite order but yes it has a uh, lead time even after getting the order so i foresee that uh, that that the fresh orders as they mature in the coming months the revenue realization would start coming in by maybe end of 22-23. However, that concern of yours regarding the, uh, the, the impact on the top line and the margins uh, will be more than taken care of our current order book, which is around about 5,100 crores as you've seen. And out of that, about 2,200 crores is on consultancy and 2,000 is on 
turnkey which are progressing very well and uh, we are more than confident that the gap if any in the few months uh, for the export uh, uh, segment will be more than taken care of by these two segments so so, so just to clarify sir even assuming that you know we get some orders from exports and if those come under execution by say 4q next year but you know i mean we might see some uh, you know i mean a uh, growth in execution but how will the operating margins play out because tonki will be you know a comparatively lower margin business as what exports is so as i said uh, uh, you you you're, you're right in saying that tonki has lesser margins than export but consultancy wing has got definitely a much higher margins than export so uh, as i said since we have a strong order book of about 2200 crores as of now itself and we are continuously getting orders in the last quarter itself we got fresh orders total of 300 crores uh, so so we are more than confident that we will be able to maintain both the top line and bottom line at least at the fy 21 22 level and 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 uh, aim for uh, higher as the quarters progress sure sure i have a, i have few more questions so i'll be waiting in the queue thank you and all the best thank you thank you Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Lokesh Manik from Valum Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, good morning, sir, and good morning to the team. Uh, am I audible? Yes, good morning. Yes, very clear. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, so the first question was on the consultancy order book. So uh, if I can, uh, you know, pardon me if I'm wrong. Uh, this. this This looks like the first quarter where we not been able to add orders uh, in the consultancy segment. Uh, given that you know uh, last quarter the outstanding order book was uh, close to 2500 crores and today we are at 2200 crores. So uh, and so this was uh, just a concern at my end. If you can address that, how do we see growth coming here? Uh, that was one. And second, uh, sir, uh, in the last two calls you had also uh, given your vision. Uh, in terms of you know uh, uh, driving the organization more from an uh, IT perspective, so any uh, progress and any update on that front that you can share could be great, sir. So the first part of your question regarding the consultancy, uh, while you can see a, as I said, an uh, a break up of about 2,200 crores in consultancy, uh, mm -hmm. it, 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 we have got fresh orders. of a total of 300 crores in the last quarter and a large portion of that is consultancy also so orders have been coming in and a number of them are in the pipeline which will mature in the coming q4 as well as the next q1 uh, the so the, the second portion regarding the it as i mentioned after the last uh, quarter we have been aggressively working on making it as a major revenue earning vertical of ours rather than uh, basically a service vertical and a, a small amount of revenue so a lot of uh, are being explored including partnerships with various prospective uh, you know uh, the people who can complement our domain strength uh, so that we can aggressively take part both in consultancy as well as execution projects of it both in domestic market as well as the you know the the outside market so Uh, you will be definitely seeing some progress in the coming quarters in the revenue realization from our IT vertical. Okay, so just for clarification, this opens up a new stream of uh, so this opens up a new new market for us, or it complements the existing markets and helps us gain more market share. Uh, IT IT can be seen as complementing my existing verticals per se because we have a. The, a very strong urban engineering and sustainability vertical and we are doing city planning and smart city planning so as you can understand it is the underlying uh, you know current and underlying uh, thread which binds all my smart city planning uh, my uh, logistic uh, planning port planning so it would be uh, supplementing all this as well as maybe some independent it consultancy works also Right? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dikshit Doshi from Whitestone Financial Advisors. Please go ahead. 
uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, a couple of questions. One, uh, in terms of Tanki, uh, what would be the execution timeline for this 2100 crore order book? So, uh, the turnkey projects normally uh, take about, uh, uh, on an average, about three years to about four years because they involve, you know, issues like uh, land acquisition, contracting, and things like that. Uh, as I mentioned, if you remember, in my last uh, quarter two uh, call, the, the second phase of most of the turnkey projects have now started post the second wave of COVID, and now uh, the quarter three uh, they are progressing very well uh, as the you know restrictions have been uh, are getting relaxed and uh, uh, by quarter four and Q1 of next FY they will start incurring more and more revenue. So uh, these, uh, as I see, uh, happening uh, the existing orders itself of about two to three years, and in any case, fresh orders would keep getting added. Okay, and in terms of margins in the turnkey, you know, earlier we were guiding at around three to four percent margin. Uh, but this quarter, it was hardly anything we have earned there. So any comment on there? Is it because of the, you know, input price increase or uh, why there was no profit? No, no, no. It is not because of any cost increase. See, uh, turnkey is a low margin area. It is, uh, normally, it's in the range of about 2 to 5%. Uh, uh, but as I said, because the second phase of most of our turnkey projects have started getting executed in the last few months, the revenue realization of this will start coming in in the coming months. This I indicated even in the Q2, that by end of Q4 and early Q1, this will start coming in. However, as you see, because the costs already start getting incurred, so you would see a temporary dip in the margin for Q3 per se, but it would even out in the coming quarters. Thank you. I would request Mr. Toshi to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Arsad Syed from Reliance Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. So my first question is again on prospect opportunity. What would you like to see in the next couple of years? And how would how we benefit from them? If you can guide me broadly on that. So uh, interesting question. And, and this is what uh, uh, we would like to uh, share with you that you see, we are uh, in a big way diversifying into a number of areas which will consolidate our existing lines of business. So we, uh, in fact, from the 1st January of this year, we've uh, you know transformed to green. We're transforming to green in all our activities, whether it is the uh, DPRs or the consultancy. So we are we started a, a consolidated and you know enhanced a new vertical called urban engineering and sustainability. So this is a very interesting area. We have already got lots of projects here. We've entered into partnerships in, with some known entities where we are targeting uh, the new areas of renewables, uh, uh, there's this uh, carbon reduction and all the new areas which has uh, come out of the new policy, especially after the COP26. So this is one another big area where we foresee a lot of growth in the coming years. Another big area is the metro. So metros, we have already been doing uh, both domestic, about 11, 12 states, and now internationally also we did recently the Mauritius metro. We are going ahead with the phase two of that. We recently got the uh, order last month for the Bahrain metro consultancy. And uh, along with partnerships, we are aggressively bidding for both domestic and international uh, metro projects. So this is again another area where I see a lot of growth for us in the coming year. So these new age areas, and I mentioned IT some time back, smart city planning, uh, I, I foresee a lot of uh, uh, growth to complement our existing lines of business. Yeah, thank you. Next question is, if you remember last week, a budget has outlined major capex on uh, capex. I would you to come back in the queue for your second question. Thank you. Sure, sir. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harshit Kapadia from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good morning, sir, and thanks for giving me the opportunity. So just wanted first for a clarification. You mentioned that you would be reaching a pre-COVID level in FI22 or FI20 number. So if I am making that as my base, then it is suggesting that the Q4 number may see a revenue decline. 
uh, 9.31 also highlighted the export revenue to be around two and a half, uh, 252 to 75 crores. So either consultancy or uh, turnkey construction business may see a decline. Is that uh, something of clear understanding? So we a clarification on that. No, I, I wouldn't put it that way. As you see, our baseline target is to reach the pre-COVID levels. And uh, as of nine months ending, if you compare all the parameters, whether it is the operating revenue, we are in the range of 1800 crores, whether it's the core EBITDA, we are in the range of 450 crores, whether it's the core EBITDA margins, we are about 24.6%. So the, the point is that we are on track to, uh, to our target of reaching the 1920 pre-COVID levels. The actual revenue mix or the, the individual uh, 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 contributors in Q4 uh, may, may vary depending on the state of the, each of these segment projects. But as an overall, we are targeting to reach both the top and bottom lines of the 1920 levels at least. Okay, fair enough, sir. Uh... The second question is on the. Uh, Sorry no. to interrupt you, Mr. Kasadia. I would request you to rejoin the queue for the second question. Uh, request participants to please limit your question to one at a time, as we have several others waiting for their turn as well. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Uma Usha from Sharad Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, if you could give the total debtors outstanding as of December 21 and the Sri Lanka exposure out of the same, that would be great. Yes, I have uh, Mr. Nayak, my director of finance. He'll give the details of the debtors. Do you have a try today? Oh, just a minute. I'll just give you the figure. Sure. sure. And the Sri Lanka project uh, is progressing well. Uh, uh, both the Mozambique and Sri Lanka export project is progressing well. As I said, about 675 crores is the total export balance, both combined, and I foresee it to be uh, coming up till the Q2 of next year. But sir, the fiscal situation in Sri Lanka is quite bad right now. So that, 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 we are not, uh, we are way well in track. So Mr. Nayak will give you the debtors figure. Sorry. The trade receivable as of 31st December starts at 607 crores. And most of the receivables from uh, Sri Lanka we have already realized and okay. part of the export realization from Mozambique also we have realized. Okay, great, great, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chintan Sheikh from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I joined late uh, in, on the call. Um, so if you can, if you can, if you can, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I can hear you. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry. So if you can, you know, highlight the pipeline on orders because uh, we de de recognize around 900 crore of order this quarter. Uh, so how uh, how should we look at uh, order pipeline going ahead? And uh, any guidance uh, on the order inflows part, if you can uh, share. And second is on the consultancy, if, you, if I may, uh, you know, the... Uh, run rate is still uh, very slow. If you if you look at sequential growth, it's uh, flat uh, in the consultancy revenue side. If you can guide on that part, uh, uh, why we are taking a little bit uh, uh, longer time to recover in the consultancy. That's all. Thank you. So the orders we got in the current quarters are 300 crores, and which makes it a total cumulative of 1630 crore orders that we've got in this FY as against 1841 crores which we got in the entire financial year last year. So it shows that we are well on track. We have even in within nine months, we've got uh, an order comparable to the range of the entire year last year. Uh, so we are well on track a number of uh, uh, areas, as I said, including the new diversified areas which we are aggressively pursuing are well on track. And uh, for the existing order book, uh, uh, 5,100 crores, 2,200 is in consultancy, 2,000 odd is round about uh, in, in turnkey, and about 675 is in uh, export tech. So uh, this this is um, uh, quite a uh, solid order book, and as I said, this will only grow both in terms of the, the mix as well as in the coming quarters. And uh, your concern regarding consultancy, I, I don't think it's a... Uh, 
it's a, it is supported by numbers because the consultancy has been growing and has been growing well. The margins are, have been also uh, comparable, in fact, to the uh, 1920 level. So our our uh, core uh, uh, consultancy margins, which were in the range of about 43 percent last. Uh, in 1920, they are in the same range. So the, the margins of consultancy and, and the progress has been doing quite well. Sure, I'll join back in. Thank you. Thank you for this. Yes, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jainam Shah from Equator Securities. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, firstly, I wanted to just uh, get a clarification about this one-time expense of this uh, inventory uh, provisioning. So, uh, I guess it will be related to the export uh, segment results, right? Because it is part of inventory. It's 15 crore expense. Yes. So, this is an unfortunate incident. One of our locomotives, which we were exporting to Mozambique, uh, got damaged at the port. So we've made uh, provision as a good accounting practice for the entire cost. We've started the insurance claim proceedings. And as this uh, insurance claim matures, we will uh, hopefully get uh, some kind of set off in that. So that's the okay. So, so basically, if we see the consultancy margin, uh, it is at around 39%, whereas in historically, it is ranging between 45 to 50%. This is the only quarter where this has fallen below the 40%. Even during last quarter, it, it was at 43%, and uh, before that, it was ranging between 45 to 50%. So any specific reason to that, like uh, we are uh, just like turnkey, the revenue will be recognized going forward, or is it because of cost optimization? So what will be our guidance for the upcoming years? Will it be ranging in, uh, below 40% or it will be back to 45 to 50%? No, I think as I clarified that the nine-month ending consultancy margin as of this year is 42.3%, which is comparable to the 43% of 1920 level. So I think it's safe to assume that this is the level which we've been operating it. This is a level which we will uh, normally uh, come to uh, operate on in the coming uh, quarters. Okay, okay, sir. Thank and uh, if me, okay. Right, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Sheikh from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, good morning. Go ahead. Yes. Yes, sir. I just needed uh, uh, one clarification. Uh, so we mentioned that we are targeting to reach the pre-COVID level. Uh, so uh, that comment for this year was pertaining to the consultancy segment or the overall uh, revenue that we were talking about? No, no, overall. So as I mentioned and I clarified with figures, as you see, see our operating revenue is 18 12, which is comparable to the operating revenue 1848 9 month ending 1920 our core EBITDA is also in the same range about 450 crores our uh, core EBITDA margins are in the same range 24.6 percent so that's what I said we are on track at the pre-covid levels of 1920 and as a as a as a company as a whole we are working on not 2021 as any base and we are working at 1920 as a base to reach at least that level and try and see how far ahead we can go of that. Sure. Sir, and the related question is pertaining to consultancy. Uh, I mean, uh, from whatever base we end up at this year, uh, what should be a steady state number one should assume for the next three, four years in terms of consultancy, given that you know, we are working with various new avenues uh, you know, to broaden our uh, you know, end market? See, consultancy out of the 1,800 uh, crores, uh, uh, which is there in nine months, uh, the, the consultancy revenue has been about 700 crores. So uh, 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 that is that is roughly about uh, one third uh, uh, of the total. And and we would uh, uh, you know continue to uh, be in that range. In fact, we will be. I, I as you correctly said, definitely with the new areas coming up. Uh, which we are trying to target, I foresee a growth in the consultancy rather than stagnating at that level. Uh, there are a lot of exciting opportunities. The new budget has thrown up a lot of opportunities. Five lakh crores of the, the allocation is in areas which is of interest to us, whether it is railways, roadways, Jal Shakti, or the housing and urban affairs uh, ministry. So 
the consultancy out of the existing order book of 2200 crores is in any case going to uh, grow and and whatever uh, gap if any of few months which may be there because exports are a long lead uh, revenue realization segment will be more than taken care of both by the consultancy and the turnkey in the coming FY. Thank you. I would request Mr. Shea to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Prashant Gopal from Spark Fund Managers India Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hi. Good morning, team. Uh, so the, there is a reference to the company removing a few orders from the book due to non-starter status. So is that cleanup complete or will it happen again next quarter? And one more. So the order pickup is not in sync with the Government of India spend on railways. Is there any lead or lag to that? Thank you. So uh, this is a normal continuous exercise which we keep doing, reviewing our uh, ongoing uh, you know, orders, which may be our non-starters in terms of not realizing revenue for a substantial period of time for various reasons. It could be across segments. So this is a continuous good accounting exercise practice that we do and we've done that in this quarter and obviously immediately having done this right away in this quarter, I don't foresee it happening in a major way while it's a continuous exercise, but in a major way not to happen in the coming quarters. However, uh, as far as your second question is concerned, uh, I uh, don't foresee uh, your apprehension in, in terms of our, our revenues or profits not in sync with the railway allocation. We are doing a lot of work across uh, the railway segments, uh, both whether it is for Indian Railways as a client, uh, whether it is in turnkey, consultancy, or in exports. Uh, we are also doing a lot of railway projects in, in, in uh, various, you know, uh, steel plants, fields or in ports. So this is a continuous process. It is that we are going to consolidate in the coming years in our existing lines of business so that we can see more uh, areas of growth uh, uh, besides our conventional lines of revenue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vishal Perival from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, so thanks for taking my question. Uh, continuing on this uh, order inflow that you mentioned in the order book, uh, so 300 crore orders that we received, it is from uh, which segment? And uh, a second, uh, this uh, order book that, or probably orders that have got cancelled, from which segment it has cancelled? So uh, 300 crores is across uh, in, in, in the same ratio roughly. Our entire, uh, if you have been analyzing our figures, are broadly our turnkey, uh, it does about uh, uh, about 25 to 30 percent. Our consultancy does about 35 odd percent. Our export does 35 odd percent. But yes, this 300 crores doesn't have any fresh export order, so it is split between consultancy and turnkey. We are getting, in fact, the tilt is towards consultancy. We've got a lot of consultancy uh, orders in this, and. Uh, 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 the, this this uh, adds up to the 1630 crores orders which we've got in the the coming uh, in the in the nine months of this year. Uh, what was the second supplementary uh, thing which you asked? Yeah. So in this uh, the order book we have seen it has gone down. So this order cancellation is from which segment? No. So this is a, as I mentioned to the pre, in the answer to the previous question. This is a continuous exercise covering all order uh, covering all the segments. So it is not any particular. Uh, uh, segment per se. It is a continuous uh, exercise across all segments, but it is primarily tilted towards the turnkey because you see, uh, by turnkey projects per se in their nature uh, of orders and revenue realization have issues like uh, land acquisition, have issues like contracting, then certain contracts may be run into uh, arbitration. So those, those kinds of uh, issues come up a little more in turnkey. So as a part of this continuous regular exercise, normally this, uh, this, this trend is, uh, uh, review is more in the turnkey area. Consultancy and exports normally don't result into short closing of orders. Turnkey orders also result in short closing because the client would uh, uh, have maybe ordered for X amount of work and after execution may find that this is enough and they short close the order with a reduced scope of work. 
Thank you. Request Mr. Pedra to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Shriyant Mehta from Equitus Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity once again. So, so this wanted to an update on the KPEX for nine months, what we've done, uh, what is for Q4 and uh, what is for FL23. And uh, if possible, if we can have a breakup in terms of, you know, how much for RMCL for uh, corporate office and stuff. So uh, our, our CapEx target for this year is about 100 crores. We have done uh, accumulative of 98 crores already. Uh, we are primarily not, we are primarily an asset light company, we are a consultancy company by, by design, by structure. So our CapEx expenditures are not very large and RMCL is a separate subsidiary. So in any case, our CapEx total is, is in 98 crores and, and uh, we have already reached most of the CapEx targeted for this year. I don't foresee any big CapEx coming forth in the coming FY also. Sure, sure, because uh, earlier, you know, we had some CAPEX lined up for our corporate offices as well as for REMC. So just wanted to clarify on the same. As I said, those are very uh, minimal CAPEX. Uh, we are not really a CAPEX company. We are an asset light company. As I said, 100 crores we have more or less reached. And I don't see any big FY 22-23 CAPEX uh, targets or CAPEX expenditures. Any major CAPEX expenditures. Okay, nothing towards uh, the solar uh, solar as well, right? I, I said I clarified very clearly that I don't see any major capex plan for FY twenty two twenty three. Okay, okay, that is from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Uttam Kumar Shreemal from Axis Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Good morning, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, what kind of uh, revenue we are, we are envisaging uh, for RMCL Limited uh, in FY23? So I must say that RMCL has done extremely well. If you see the figures, in the nine months ending December Q3, we've already touched 70 crores as the revenue and a pat of uh, 33 crores, which is comparable to nearly the full year of pre-COVID levels 1920. 1920, the revenue operations was 78 crores and the PAT was 35 crores. So in nine months, we are comparable to that. So I, I see RMCL uh, uh, growing uh, uh, in, in a healthy way. And uh, with this trend, uh, I, I foresee surpassing 1920 levels in a big way in a, in a, in, and also in the coming FY uh, 22, 23. Okay, sir. That's all from my side. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harsh Kapad from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, Harsh hi. Kapadia. Thanks for yeah, yeah. Thanks for giving me the opportunity again, sir. Just wanted to check, sir. Only employee trends, sir. Our strategy has been that we have uh, lowered a number of employees, and we are looking at people working more on deputation. But if you look at, uh, you know, last uh, year, as in, in the first nine months, the employee cost has uh, risen substantially. So is there a change in strategy over here or are you getting more work in future? So we are already taking more employees on board. So just wanted to understand on that. No, no. So in fact, your, your figures seem to be slightly, if you see the revenue per employee or the operational profit for employee, uh, we have been uh, our, our, uh, we have been on an upward trend. In fact, to give you the actual, the 2021 in the uh, nine month ending, we were the profit operational profit for employee was only nine lakhs. And then this year, we've already touched 15.4 lakhs, which is even more than the pre-COVID levels of nine months, which was only 15 lakhs. Even the revenue per employee in the nine month ending this year is 65 lakhs per employee which in the pre-COVID levels in nine months was 63 lakhs per employee. So uh, we are constantly working and, and this mix of uh, regular deputationists and this is a constant mix which is a, based on the need base and the kind of orders and the projects we get. But yes, as an overall picture, we have both in terms of the revenue, operational revenue per employee as well as the operational profit per employee we have already gone ahead of the pre-COVID levels also, and we will continue to maintain this trend in the coming quarters and the coming FY. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Rohan Samant from Multi Act Equity. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, just wanted uh, an update on uh, whether the quality assurance uh, would be, you know, covered under the October Railway Board circular uh, regarding opening up of tendering to private competition. Uh, I, I would. I, I'm not very sure of what uh, uh, how it pans out. Yes, uh, the circular says in general whether it pans out in the coming months to apply to QA. Time will only tell. As of now, we are more than equipped. To we have already got lot of orders in 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 a number of places on competitive basis for our QA wing, and we are more than comp, uh, uh, confident that with our with our uh, uh, expertise and our experience and also our uh, uh, competitive edge in the in the uh, financial portion of our bids uh, we will take this as more an opportunity rather than as a as a challenge so we we will be more than uh, confident to as it pans out uh, to tackle as it comes thank you the next question is from the line of Vishal Perival from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Thanks sir, for uh, taking the question again. Uh, just continuing with the previous participant, you mentioned the capex in FI23 uh, will be negligible since you are consultancy. So uh, this capex, when you said capex, it includes both your investment and capex, right? So it is primarily capex, right? And capex also includes if you do some major investment into your subsidiary. That is the per se definition of capex for the holding company. And uh, as of now, I, I uh, the general the principle of a consultancy company, and and you've seen a past capex figures also. They have been in the range of about 80, 100 crores only. So that's that's a, that, that is what I mean by not a very large capex. Okay, so then solar plant, uh, that uh, proposal that we used to I mean, communicate to the investors in previous quarters, uh, like, you know, uh, 1,000 megawatt, 1,300, then it was like, you know, a bit of change in also. So uh, there is no major capex that is happening uh, on that part? So, so as of now, that that the, 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 it is still in work in progress, and we'll see how it pans out, how much it entails capex for us. And by the, the end of this FY, we would be able to then give you a clarity on the capex plan for FY22-23. Having said that, as a general, uh, why I reiterated and again reiterate as a general guideline, we are not really a very capex intensive company. So these, even if as you see the past trend, this is a very minimal amount of capex figures in the overall capex, uh, you know, expenditures across uh, companies. No, I think that that's a pretty commendable reason is like, you know, we are consultancy and we are not uh, like, you know, loading up our balance sheet. So uh, that will be taken positively by the investors if, if we are going in that direction. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Uttam Kumar Srinivasan from Access Security. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks sir, for giving the opportunity once again. Uh, sir, we have a uh, turnkey order figure of uh, 2081 crores. So what kind of revenue we are forcing in FY23 from turnkey uh, segment itself? So if you see again, uh, as I mentioned, turnkey contributes roughly about 25 to... Traditionally, if you see over a sustained period of time and a lo longer period, say maybe six months or a, or, a, or a year, because if you see a particular quarter, the maybe, as I said, in Q3 or Q2, the revenue realization of turnkey was less. But as a, as a whole, the turnkey normally contributes about uh, 25 to 30% of our top line. And with this 2100 crores of the, the uh, order book, uh, I, I, I see that it's a substantial, you can, you can and, and having uh, uh, given a guidance that we will reach at least our 1920 levels in 2021, 20, uh, 22, and grow further in 22, 23. It would be in that range of the total top line. Turnkey would contribute to that. Okay, sir. okay, that's all for my table. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jen M. Shah from Equitas Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for both of you. 
thanks yes, for the opportunity sure. again uh, so so basically if we see our export revenue uh, in last 4 to 5 years so it was ranging between the 200 crore or somewhere in fy 21 we were not able to record major revenue because of this covid pandemic and this uh, shipment issues and if we uh, see the upcoming year uh, thing that uh, will be executing uh, somewhere around 400 crores from uh, current export order in fy 23 and uh, there is no major order order on hand in our books and if you see the past then there is no major order uh, major export revenue uh, in our overall revenue uh, per se and if we take the uh, like uh, this consultancy at around 1000 or 1100 crore and then spend it around 700 800 or even 1000 crore rupees so our revenue from the fy 22 level will be in the similar range of for fy 23 and if we talk about the margin that export margin which is contributing at around 25% as against the increasing share of this uh, uh, this uh, turnkey segment uh, would be hurting our overall ebitda margin uh, is this understanding correct so uh, first posh let me go step by step so you asked two three things uh, linked to each other first is that export we've done the highest ever in the 9 months we've touched 700 crores so this year with the balance q4 uh, as i as i said earlier another about 250 275 watt crores we would touch the highest in the, in the recent few years uh yes the balance about 400 odd crores would spill over to the next year and also we are aggressively working on a number of uh, fronts on export Uh, leads in various countries as i said because of the the all now international uh, travel and countries opening up we have been having a lot of uh, interaction i am sure that in in the coming months we should be able to get some uh, export orders afresh but as you correctly said by their basic design export segment is a long lead segment from the time the order matures till the time the revenue realization happens it is a long lead so having said that however with our 22000 2200 crores of consultancy in our order book of 5100 crores the gap is any in the fy 22 23 will be more than made up by the consultancy and the 2100 crores order book of turnkey the, the consultancy wing by itself has a much higher margin than the export wing so whatever gap if any in few months which would be there from revenue realization from the export wing would be more than taken care of by the uh, the revenues and the margins by the consultancy segment so as an overall in 22 23 we uh, are aiming to uh, target the 21 22 levels of uh, revenues and margins at least and uh, uh, aim to at least improve as uh, the quarters pan by Okay. Okay. So, but uh, if we see the overall range of uh, turnkey so leads, this for this. Sir, sir, may I request you to rejoin the queue for follow-up question? Thank you. The next next question is from the line of Parimal Nithani from Credential Investment. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sir. Uh, good morning. Thanks for the uh, opportunity and for good numbers that you've given. So I just wanted to know. You mentioned in your uh, on call the opportunity being presented by the budget. If you can address what's the uh, opportunity price for us, and you know, how do you see the company next three years? It will be much better for us. In the capex of the, the government already around the capex. Yeah, thank you. So this is a these are very interesting and exciting times for us, uh, especially this post budget. Uh, we did an in-depth analysis of the opportunities for us, and we found that there is an uh, allocation of around five lakh crores. for few, few major ministries which are of interest to us out of that about 2 lakh crores is for the ministry of roads and highways which includes now we must have heard the uh, new ropeway plan uh, which is under the ministry of roads so we do lot of work in uh, ropeways have been doing so i see this is another big opportunity about 1.5 lakh crores is in the railway segment which is our traditional uh, line of business in any case and uh, interestingly there is a about 85 lakh 85000 crores in the jal shakti ministry and about 80000 crores in the ministry of housing and of housing and urban affairs now both these sectors we've been doing lot of work and we are aggressively consolidating these verticals whether it is smart city plans mobility plans uh, uh, you know the the traffic studies so recently we got the order for the chandigarh tri city for the smart city plan for chandigarh then jal shakti we we are doing lot of work in water uh, segment renewables of water recycling 
So I, I see a lot of opportunities in the coming years, especially in these new age verticals, uh, uh, besides our traditional lines of business. And so this is uh, mainly across consultancy that you see, or it's across your, uh, uh, including turnkey also? Both, both. So we, you've seen in our past trend in the years, we have a healthy mix of turnkey and consultancy, and we will, uh, we will continue on a case-to-case -case basis to target both consultancy and turnkey in all these sectors. Okay. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. And all the rest. Thank you. Thank you. The next question from the line of Harshit Kapadia from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks uh, again, sir. So just, uh, on the follow-up question on the um, opportunity, uh, any opportunity in the large size uh, segment that we have been talking about on the DFT, on the high-speed rail, semi-high-speed trains, and the uh, two uh, suburban railway, uh, you know, upgradation uh, that have been planned. So any color on that would be really helpful. So, in fact, we are already doing a lot of work with DFC. We have a, uh, a running contract with DFC. We are doing a lot of work with them. We got last year, you must, if you must be following us, you must be aware, we got an order from Haryana Orbital. So, we are doing that. And in that, uh, with, with more and more, uh, in this model being encouraged by the government in various states, uh, these, these uh, orbital railways, light railways, suburban railways, uh, including high speed uh, and semi high speed, we've got the consultancy projects for that. So we are doing a lot of work in that. In fact, uh, recently we got the uh, order for the transaction advisory for the Bangalore suburban railway project also. So uh, uh, we we see a lot of uh, um, uh, opportunities in the coming months and years in these areas as more and more states uh, uh, delve into these areas of orbital railways or or you know short lead uh, suburban railways. And how's the competition landscape in the consultancy portion of the business? Has it increased or has it remained stagnant? Or uh... <laughs> Well, that's a very general question. Competition is always there and we are always ready for competition with our, with our uh, past uh, and our domain strength and our uh, uh, policy of being partnering wherever it is required on a case-to-case -case, uh, basis on... Uh, uh, you know, uh, complementing our bench strength and our domain strength for aggressively bidding for new areas also. Uh, we'll, we have been working. You must be following us in the last uh, month or so. We've had a number of partnerships and MOUs across various sectors. So so with this, uh, the uh, I think uh, I, I take this com uh, competition as a good healthy sign for us to improve even further. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjay Doshi from Nippon, India. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I have uh, a more a focus on the overseas business, sir. Uh, one is your uh, export uh, business has been quite volatile, as you mentioned. It's a good uh, long lead time project uh, business. Uh, but do you see, I mean, the kind of effort you have made in uh, coming out with uh, standardized and uh, more customized products for different markets and you know, entering new markets. So can this become a very sustainable annual 500-700 kind of revenue on a 3-4 year basis? Yes, in fact, as I mentioned, as in the last few months, the, the international, the, the uh, travels and the, uh, the interaction is opening up more. We have got lot of interest from various countries and they are, uh, in fact, uh, uh, with the, the customization model of ours like we did for Mozambique it's being it's got a lot of response even during the IRE held recently we got a lot of positive response from various uh, overseas clients so uh, 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 as you correctly mentioned in the export segment revenue there is a certain lead time so in some quarters it may see dips in terms of revenue realization and some quarters or in the half yearly it may see a upswing when the revenue actually gets realized after shipment. But on a sustained basis, yes, as, a, as seen over a longer period of time, I see the export business to grow in a, in, a, in a substantial way, more so with the success of this customized gauge which you've done and commissioned and it's being uh, running very well in Mozambique. Thank you. The next question is from the last 
Line of Viraj Mithani from Jupiter Financial. Please go ahead. Viraj yes, Mithani. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, go ahead. I can hear you. Yes, uh, congratulations was on a good set of numbers. I have one question, sir. Now, we are broadly, or if you talk about 20 levels, we are at 2,500 crore of revenue. And if I had to ask you, within the next, say, three, four years, what growth rate we can foresee? Like, you, since you think there's so much of the opportunities, just a general ballpark figure would be okay. I don't want exit figures. So, 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 so sense on the growth rate in the next coming three to four, five years, you know, so... So as I as I said that uh, this year we will reach 1920 and then uh, 22-23 uh, as I mentioned uh, there would be maybe a certain dip on a quarter for some uh, export revenue which will make up with the consultancy and turnkey. But on a general long term uh, oh, we see a very healthy growth. So I don't want to speculate but uh, whatever you feel is the healthy rate of growth uh, we will be I can only say with this aggressive diversification in new age areas that we are doing and we are getting a lot of positive response in areas of sustainability, environment, recyclables, renewable energy, smart city planning. You can see uh, in the coming quarters, you will see definitely a more uh, bigger growth uh, trajectory. But it will not be fair to me to restrict to either a very high number or a very low number for a three to five year because that would be speculative. Let let the, let the our work speak for itself in the coming months and you'll see uh, the more and more new area orders coming up. So it would be fair to assume double digit growth rate on top and bottom line? As I said, I wouldn't like to spe speculate. Okay. Uh, these are just speculation numbers. Okay, sir, and my one more question. What is our cash in the balance sheet, our own cash would be, sir? Uh, so, I was asking a second question, but just to in case our cash on hand as a Q3 ending is 800 crores. 800 crores. Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Umang Shah from Sharad Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, sir, uh, previously we've had some problems with respect to collecting receivables from Mozambique. So, when we are exporting right now, how do we make sure that we don't have any receivables issues? I think the issue uh, has been sorted out quite uh, well. And now, both in both our export uh, realization, in both from Mozambique and Sri Lanka, is well on track. All those nitty gritties have been sorted out. And I don't foresee any major holdup in the trade receivables from our export exports. And sir, how much uh, credit period do we give them? Pardon me? How much credit period do we give to these buyers? That varies from uh, contract to contract. So I, I would like to make a generalized statement. It varies from order to order. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Lokesh Manik from Valum Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you for the opportunity again, sir. Uh, just one question, uh, the recent MOUs that you have done, uh, what is the revenue opportunity that you see from the uh, contract for these MOUs? No, so each of the, uh, the MOUs which you've done recently have been very well thought of and fit into our uh, master plan and our strategy uh, for long-term uh, growth and our basic uh, you know, uh, uh, strategy of a future ready and trying to do not just more of the same, but much more of the new. So each of these MOUs, whether it is with uh, BML for metros, where we are doing, uh, uh, we are going to aggressively bid for a number of domestic and international projects, whether it is with SNEC for consultancy, whether it is IIT Roodki, CSIR or AITD, all of these are, are going to mature into uh, uh, revenues uh, definitely in the coming months, because each one of them, whether whether they, they have a certain sector in which they operate on, they will complement our strength, whether it, whether it is in the consultancy, whether it is in the export, whether it is in the turnkey, and, and each one of uh, our partnerships and MOUs have been strategically thought of uh, in the overall game plan forward. Right, and who is the long term in nature for? Obviously, MOUs and agreements are uh, based on a long-term horizon. However, they vary. The time period varies from case to case for each MOU, depending on the comfort level of both the partners. Okay. So, these are not project-specific uh, uh, MOUs. Sorry? 
These are not project specific MOUs. These are long term in nature. MOUs are uh, are memorandums of understanding to be jointly complementing each other's strengths and taking part in opportunities both domestic and international. Understood. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank uh, each, uh, each of the participants for their uh, questions and uh, uh, the entire management is here with me and the entire board. Uh, we again assure you that uh, the trend as you've seen in Q3, uh, we will be, we are committed to uh, maintain this in the coming quarter and uh, I'm sure that with the, the opening up of the uh, economy and, and, and the restrictions, we are uh, definitely going to capitalize on the opportunities which come up, especially including the opportunities which, as I said, have been thrown up in the current budget also. Thank you. Thank you all for being a part of this conference call. If you need any further information or clarification, please send an email to gaurav.g at conceptpr.com. I repeat, the email ID is gaurav.g at conceptpr.com. Ladies and